first thing that comes to my mind is uh, in my profession, which is coaching and consulting, people sell their time, um, but also care a lot about what's happening for the client. Um, so I have a, a feeling of satisfaction when something good is happening for the client, and that motivates me. And then if the client in return uh, engages, then I feel like there's more value. So it's a little different than just selling time for money. There's a, there's a kind of reciprocity and there's a feeling of satisfaction that comes from actually helping. I think what I think of first when I shift my mind to the idea of care economy is um, people shifting their focus and kind of their goals to something that's less um, physical, kind of the things that you can have and more to just like the bonheur, which is a French word for like just the happiness that you can have and I think at least from what I've learned in my family is you get a lot more happiness from connection and care economy is promoting the idea of connecting with others, connecting with the world around you, connecting with what people have to offer and kind of taking a moment to think about that and not just kind of the physical things that you can get or accomplish. For me, my hope is, is quality, you know, is that we spend more money on quality and less uh, on lots of, on having lots of things or quantity. So right now in our culture, it's about quantity, not quality. And I want that to change. And I think that when that happens, you'll have a natural movement towards the care economy. Um, something like that. It's the care economy and the way it benefits all is that individuals benefit others by acting in ways that um, serve for the greater whole. And in doing that, they benefit themselves. It's um, being compassionate and altruistic, acting for the good of others in turn always helps yourself or always brings some self-benefit. So somebody could say it's selfish, but it's really not selfish because morally it's all good. Morally it's, um, it's the best thing you can do. Being um, kind, compassionate to others makes them want to be kind, compassionate to you, to others. And when we care for others, it gives them the ability to care for others. I think um a lot of people are in the mindset that this is a zero-sum game and that there's not enough for everyone. It's just, I think it's a mindset and I think some people think other people, um, the haves, uh, believe that people uh, need to be pushed down um, and not have for them to have and it's, it's just, it couldn't be more untrue. Everyone. I think everyone can have the same basic needs and happiness in life and um, it's just a mindset to me. Um, it's really screwed up, but <laughs> I think that's where it starts. It doesn't make any sense to me, but if you have to try and figure out where it comes from, I, uh, I, just, I, just, think, I just think we need to, to tweak and help people understand that um, when your friends are happy or when the people you live with are happy, you know, everyone thrives. I have bigger goals than just making a career for myself, but I don't know what that's going to be. I think the important part um, is, um, you know, young people having basically um, skills to go out and do whatever needs to be done. Um, you know, I really admire Bill for his visionary uh, thinking, um, and I, um, I'm not a fan of doing that myself. Um, I find it tiresome, but I like doing. Um, and if I am to be a cog in the machine of making the world a better place, that is fine by me. And I think we need more cogs. It would be a society where people are more equal and live together and are less sort of segregated. Um, 
the rich and the poor. And I think, because I think that's going in the wrong direction right now. And if that was to turn around, that would be wonderful. But it does make me think of my neighbors across the street and they're, they have a babysitter that gets paid $22 an hour and she takes care of usually one kid, sometimes two. And I think, wow, if I got paid for caring for three kids and doing the bills and managing the house and buying the groceries, blah, blah, blah. That would probably be more like $40 an hour, maybe $50 an hour. And if we were to take all that and put it in the GDP along with all my friends and other moms, that would be pretty interesting. Being heard. Um, being loved. I think the part that excites me is what happens when I care for something besides myself. My will becomes big. And there, um, it's worth living when you have, when I step out of my own little world into a bigger world. And all it takes Sometimes it's just thinking about the person next to me. And it could be listening to that person, it could be offering them a cup of tea, I think it could be anything, but that's what makes my life fulfilling. I think it's a, an economy that's based mostly on caring for other people and the environment. Um, so, pretty much like, Instead of having it based around you succeed if you have money, you succeed if you care, and uh, just having it be based on individual interactions and community rather than individual success and trying to get to the top. You know, to me, um, thinking about caring for others lessens that sense of self-centeredness and the self-absorption and actually in my own experience that's what leads me more to being genuinely happy than it's like if I have an apple you know if I eat that apple then who benefits just myself but if I share that apple with other people then I and others enjoy the apple so Maybe, um, I don't know, education. I think we, we uh, I think also, first of all, I'm not sure it's a fixable situation, really. So, but even, even though it's not fixable, I think we have to try as best we can to make a difference and make a change. Yeah. And so when I think of care economy, I think of two words, care and economy. Uh, care, I guess, suggests, um, uh, you know, takes into account humanity, the emotions, the needs, the, the wants, uh, what uh, I suppose we really need, but do we really know? You know? Um, and then the economy, the thing that's uh, a market, the thing that's, uh, even that I would have a hard time giving a definition really, but I think uh, everybody, knows, everybody knows what we're talking about when we say economy. We've moved from uh, one part of the planet to another uh, and we have changed it. If you look at the world from space now, uh, humanity has enveloped it. Um, our cities are almost like tumours um, and they grow and grow and we've, in the last 500 years, uh, the story of how we've combined uh, science and with economic progress has really been incredible. I mean, we have, we have used science uh, and economic, the economic machine to really uh, change entirely the way we exist on planet Earth. Uh, and it's been unbelievably productive in terms of 
that you and I can stand on the shoulders of all of our ancestors and really benefit from so many amazing things. Um, but right now, we are like cancer cells which don't know when to stop reproducing. They just keep reproducing, reproducing, reproducing. And <clears throat> the real challenge for humanity now is to find uh, a different way to be. The whole system needs to just be revamped because it's so corrupt. Basically, you know, once long ago there was a revolution separating church and state. Now we need a revolution that separates business and state because really what's running our, our countries is, is money and that's got nothing to do with taking care of anything or anybody or the planet. It's just about making more money and it's endless and it's bottomless and it incites greed. Well, I believe that we have individual responsibility in, in um, where we direct our eyeballs because, um, you know, like how in the economy you vote with your dollar every time you buy something. On the internet you vote with your eyeballs. <laughs> you know, every time you look at something or click it on something, you're essentially giving money or generating income or generating the wealth of popularity to someone or something or a, or a company. And um, so I think that that is huge and that if we're more uh, responsible clickers, you know, in general, that, um, that we can really change the direction of social media and of what people, um, maybe people don't want to be seeing the negative sensationalist news, but it's what's in front of us. So if we can resist the click maybe and um, seek out our, the information that we truly want to see on an individual level, then I think that that can change a lot, a lot of things. A fair economy, that would be so nice. Really, we don't need a communist because that doesn't work either. There has to be something different, but I'm not clever enough to <laughs> to invent it. But I do want to support Bela, who is really um, my husband, who really is so. He's, it's 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 just the last project in his life, really. And he's throwing it himself into it, like he threw himself into all the other businesses. Yeah, he started. So I'll be his support. <laughs>